This is the second part of a crash course about climate entitled Climate Change, Serious But Not Hopeless. This part is called Four Degrees Warmer. I'll explain the title as I move through this lecture. The focus of this part is global warming. And let's begin by looking at some data which shows how Earth has warmed. These are measurement data. They're showing Earth's temperature, its average temperature, from 1880 to 2019, fluctuating around about 14 to 15 degrees. Here you see the pedagogic challenge faced by climate scientists. How can we show this curve to society and explain to them that something major is happening? One way of doing it is to change the time scale so we look further back in time so we can see this gradual, apparently gradual increase in a longer time perspective. Now I've set this um, graph up so we begin at the year zero and go to 2019 and now it becomes much clearer that the warming has occurred recently, the warming of one degree so far. Let me now add the IPCC forecast up to the year 2100. This is their business as usual forecast, which implies that we do not take any action to combat climate change. That would lead to a four degree warming compared to today. But what does four degrees actually mean? As geologists, we can look back in time and look at the world when the temperature was four degrees different. And let, so let's do so. Let's start by looking at what the Earth would be like if it was four degrees colder than today. And to do so, we don't need to go very far back in time at all. We only need to go 20,000 years. So now I've changed the horizontal axis again, so it begins 20,000 years before the year 2100 and takes us up to the year 2100. 20,000 years ago, the temperature was four degrees cooler than it is today. Take a moment and think about it. What did the Earth look like then? What was different? That was the last glaciation. Four degrees, dropping Earth's average temperature from 15 to 11, is sufficient for the ice caps to expand and cover much of Northern Europe. Here's Stockholm underneath the ice. And we know this happened because we can find evidence for it. This enormous boulder weighs 100 tons. It's sitting on top of a hill in a park in Stockholm. How did it get to the top of the hill? Water cannot carry a rock that big. This is an erratic carried by the ice. So we know that the glaciers were here. We know that if Earth was four degrees colder, it would be glaciated again. But we're moving forward in time now, and it's not going to be getting cooler. It's going to be getting warmer, four degrees by 2100, if we do not act. We can look back in time to see when the Earth was warmer, and I'm going to take us back in time 55 million years to a time when Earth's temperature rose quite suddenly by seven degrees. This temperature rise was already from a hot baseline of 25. The world looks very different in this artist's impression. This is Antarctica, and this is Australia. 55 million years ago, those two continents were closer together. We're seeing the effects of continental drift, continents moving at the rate your fingernails are growing. We're most of the way to the dinosaurs. They went extinct 65 million years ago. So what happened at this time? Let's look at the temperature measurements. Let's zoom in on the time around 55 million years ago. These are calculated temperatures from 56 million years ago to 54 million years ago. If we zoom in at the point around about 55 million years ago, the temperature rose very suddenly by seven degrees. Those high temperatures remained for about 170,000 years. So what was the cause? Pangaea, the supercontinent, was breaking up. And one of the causes of Pangaea, one of the effects of Pangaea breaking up was increased volcanism. Volcanism is a natural source of carbon dioxide. 
So if there are more volcanoes active, as there will be when a supercontinent is breaking up, there'll be more CO2 released to the atmosphere. That, in turn, leads to a stronger greenhouse. That stronger greenhouse makes it warmer, and that can trigger other processes. For example, the thawing of permafrost. This image shows permafrost collapsing as it thaws. Permafrost is frozen ground, uh, which covers much of nor northern Siberia and northern Canada, northern Scandinavia today. As it thaws, it releases methane to the atmosphere. Methane is a short-lived but very potent greenhouse gas. So let's analyze what happened at that time. More CO2 enters the atmosphere because of more volcanism. That puts on the heating and we get global warming, which in turn causes permafrost to thaw, which puts more methane in the atmosphere and makes a stronger greenhouse effect. That causes more global warming. The temperature continues to rise. More permafrost thaws. More methane ends up in the atmosphere. The greenhouse effect becomes even stronger. And there's even more global warming. You see the difference between this situation and the situation I described in part one about the weathering of rocks. Here, the thermostat only has an on switch. It switches on and on and on again. And Earth gets warmer and warmer and warmer. So how do we know that this actually happened 55 million years ago? We, d we know this from looking in marine sediments. That sediment's recovered from the bottom of the ocean using a drilling ship like this one here, Geoides Resolution. The tower in the middle of the ship is a drill. The drill penetrates the hole in the base, in the base of the ship five kilometers to the bottom of the ocean where these huge teeth chew into the sediment and the sediment itself is pushed up into the hollow cylinder you can see between the, the drill bits. And then a, a very clever mechanism allows the sediment to be pulled up to the surface um, through the hollow pipe and laid out on a table for scientists to look at. And this is what the sediment looks like for around that time interval 55 million years ago. Most of it is white, and it should be, because it contains very, very small fossils, and those fossils are white and they have calcareous shells, which gives the white color. That's except for a brief interval, and that's the 170,000 year interval when the Earth's temperature became so hot. That's brown, because there are no shells. The reason, the shells dissolved. Because when there's a lot of carbon in the atmosphere, you'll have a lot of CO2 in water, and it becomes acidic, and it dissolves the shells. Now, we know that happens because we can look at pictures of these shells. Here's one here. Notice how its shell has become damaged. That's because it's partly dissolved. If we look at it with a very high-powered microscope, you can see how layers are dissolving away. The only thing about these pictures of the shells is they're not from 55 million years ago. They're from now. Today, shells are dissolving in the world's oceans because of the CO2 we are releasing to the atmosphere, and it in turn being dissolved in the oceans, making it more acidic. This is global warming. So let's look at global warming and see how it works. Annually, we release 43.1 billion tons of CO2 to the atmosphere. So it's got nothing to do with volcanoes. They release about 0.1 billion tons. We switch the heating on because there's more CO2 in the atmosphere. The greenhouse effect strengthens, and there's global warming, the Earth gets warmer. So let's think about global warming. What would that do to the polar ice caps? Well, of course, they will melt. Ice is light colored. The sea is dark colored. That means Earth becomes darker. Its albedo is reduced. We've turned on the warmth again. The dark sea can absorb more heat and we have more global warming. So the temperature keeps on increasing. Let's look at the effect of that, and let's in Stockholm. I'm going to illustrate 
the temperature increase in Stockholm with the help of warming stripes, color-coded, blue for cooler temperatures, red for warmer temperatures. This goes back to 1760. And as we see, as we go forward in time, the temperature goes up and down. But in the last 20 years, almost all of the years have been warm. So we now have a question. What are these next 80 years going to be like? Because this is our choice. We can choose our future for 2100. And that's what the last part of this crash course is about.